Well, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Desert Sky Adventures and welcome back to Tombstone. Today I'm here at the world famous Boot Hill Cemetery and we're going to get an exclusive tour with one of the managers, Wayne, who's worked here for quite some time. As always, we are inviting you to come along with us. Just in case you're not aware, Boot Hill Cemetery is one of the locations that you can come and investigate at the second annual Tombstone Wild West Paracon, included with a couple different packages. So go to the, abs the website, tombstoneparacon.com, check out the different ticket packages. This is a very rare opportunity to explore Boot Hill Graveyard at night. All right, everybody, so I'm here with Wayne, and Wayne, you are one of the managers here at Boot Hill, correct? That's correct, long time. All right. Eight years. Eight years now. Okay. Very cool. And what would you say is the the coolest thing or the best thing about working at a historical cemetery like this? I guess it might be the questions that you get from everybody. You know, they're, they're so varied and there's so many different, they just kind of get the ideas in their mind about something. And sometimes it's, it's excellent. It's what it is, but a lot of times it isn't. And so it's kind of nice to let them know the facts. Right, right. Okay. Very cool. So can you tell us about some of the more uh, notorious graves in the cemetery here? Well, we're starting right here. This is Florentino. And if uh, what we're going to kind of do is maybe with the movie Tombstone, because a lot of people are familiar with that. You know, Florentino was Indian Charlie. He was one of the nemesis okay. uh, of Wyatt and his bunch. He, uh, he helped, well, held the horses when they shot Morgan, did a lot of that stuff. Well, he was also the one that Wyatt went out and got and shot out at uh, Spence's. Uh, lumber camp. So he was one of the first to go down in the Ben Bender ride. Well, uh, maybe I should give a little history of Boot Hill. Uh, opened in 1878 and it eventually closed in 1884 when it got full and now at that time it was called the Tombstone Cemetery. Uh, now that's what they call the new one. I guess if it's new from 1884 on. Uh, right. That's out west of town. But uh, it later kind of went into neglect. People kind of forgot about it. It became a, a dump ground. And luckily in about the 20s, some people, including the Boy Scouts in this area, got together. They cleaned it all up. They used uh, M.R. Peel's grave, which we'll probably see later, as kind of the center point to figure out where everybody was buried, old records, pioneers, things like that. Uh, but right here we have what, what is probably the most famous area of Boot Hill. We've got the McClowries, we've got the Clantons, uh, Old Man Clanton, and it's, it's probably the place where everybody comes to to see. And once again, Tombstone movie, you know about them. Uh, they were all killed at the OK Corral except for Old Man Clanton, who actually was moved here after he died out in Skeleton Canyon. And uh, two of the brothers, Finn and Ike, actually brought him in here and buried him here next to his son. This grave, Mrs. John Clum, has a lot to do with the, the actual cleaning up of the area because when they had the first El Dorado here, uh, John Clum, who if you know from the movie, he was the first mayor. He could not find his wife's spot or spot. And so it really upset him. He got together with some people and they decided to clean this place up. And that's what they did. Now, one of the things I like to say is that every row has a story. And if you come here, you get a little booklet. It's this little Boot Hill Bible. It tells you everything about everybody in here. You can know a heck of a lot more than you did when you first got here. And uh, it goes all the way through. And Every row, right? Every row is in here. Yeah. Uh, and it gives you little details in the front of it as far as what Boot Hill was mm -hmm. and what it is today. Uh, when telling a story, for example, I like to tell people this one because this this is M.R. Peel. He was an engineer who happened to be out at uh, a mine out by the San Pedro River. A robbery occurred, and even though no money was taken or anything else, he ended up dying that night. He got murdered. Uh, they sent out a posse to try and get the guys, mainly a guy named Grounds and another one named Hunt, Billy Grounds. Uh, but when they got there, this gentleman over here, Gillespie, was on the, was on the force, and he apparently had some ambition about being the next sheriff of town. 
He was only a deputy for like 12 hours before he got killed. Uh, wow. He wanted to be a hero. He came in the back door and got his head blown off, just like that. Uh, if you want to know more about the story, you go down about eight or ten more graves, and there's one of the outlaws that got killed that night, Billy Grounds. He's buried about eight, eight or so down there. So Charlie Storms, I recognize this name here. This fellow was shot uh, in front of the Oriental, is that right? That is correct. He got in a confrontation with Luke Short. They went outside, and that was the end of Mr. Storms. <laughs> and Luke Short was a pretty bad uh, mamma jamma, if I remember correctly. He he was actually uh, one of Wyatt Earp's best buddies yeah. in town and, and hung around with him. Actually ended up in Dodge City and uh, called at a bar there. He called Wyatt Earp and asked him to come down and straighten some things out there, and they all came down. I cannot remember what it was called, mm. but it was eight or nine officers that came down there and kind of straightened out Dodge City. Luke Short. Wow. Oh, here's another name that a lot of people will recognize. Tell us about this one. All right. Well, that's Marshal Fred White. He was the first marshal of Tombstone. Uh, unfortunately, when trying to settle down the Cowboys one night, uh, Curly Bill handed him his gun, and the gun went off, and Fred was killed. Uh, later became proven, or the testimony said that he was accidentally killed. But uh, he's in the movie, and that's Fred White right there. If you see all the money on the graves, yeah, that is a, a lot of people ask us that question. They don't know it. It started in Vietnam. Uh, Different denominations meant different things. Right. Penny meant you served with them, and so on and so on, or knew them. Quarter meant you were there when you, they died. Uh, and it was way away because of Vietnam. A lot of people were against Vietnam. So it was their way of letting the people and the families know that they were visiting the graves. Red White gets a lot of visitors. When you're at Boot Hill, uh, we have a little side trail that you go down. It's about 0.2 miles, and it has 26 people buried down there as a memorial to the Jewish community. Uh, they built it in 1984. A gentleman came over. They actually hauled over some soil from Jerusalem, put it down there, and it's, it's a very nice monument that they did there. None of the graves are marked, but we believe there's about 26 people buried there. A couple people said that after all this happened, that John Heath, his body went to Texas. It's not actually here. What do you know about that? The legend has it that happened. Yeah, that his uh, wife came and got him. Uh -huh. so, but he was buried here for a spot for a time. Okay. Whether he's been moved or not, I, I don't know. I wasn't there. But but uh, it's, it's one of the biggest stories that Tombstone and, and Bisbee had together. Uh -huh. And that uh, there were several people killed in Bisbee, in what they call the Bisbee Massacre, including a pregnant woman, uh, which of course irritated a lot of people. Heath was the leader of it, but he wasn't involved in the actual, in fact, he led the posse away from him. And later when they found that out, they arrested him. They had already, or maybe at that point, decided that the five that were involved in the murders were gonna be hung. Mm -hmm. Then the local Bisbee people found out that Heath was only going to go to jail. Life sentence, maybe, whatever. So they broke him out, lynched him. And uh, there's still monuments downtown that show where the tree, where, where the telephone pole was that uh, lynched him. This gentleman here is a Kansas kid. We don't know his name. We don't hardly know anything about him, but he always seems to appear and is involved when we have ghost hunters here. Hmm. And so he he actually kind of shows them around a little bit. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find the grave one night, and he actually told him where to go to find it. Wow. So, but we don't know his name. We've been trying to get it. He just has to know. So this is the famous Lester Moore. And you can read his inscription. We don't even have to say it because everybody knows it, probably. Uh, legend has it that he was killed in Naco over a fight over a 
package that was busted up. He worked for Wells Fargo, as legend says, and they both killed each other. Dunstan died also. But uh, it's probably one of the most famous graves in the West. Uh, it's, it's known around the world. Back in Tombstone's prime, there were a lot of Chinese here, a lot of them. This was one of their leaders. She went by China Mary. She was Mrs. Ah Loom. Uh, she basically was very well loved in this town and also was, you know, a supplier. Uh, she would lo loan money to people when they were down and out, all that kind of stuff. Um, so the Chinese have their own section over here. Um, the gentleman over here, Quang Ki, he was buried in, uh, I believe, Bisbee. Don't quote me on that, but he was buried somewhere else. The sound, townspeople didn't like it. They didn't like the pauper grave. They brought him up here and did this. So, back there, if you ever heard of a gentleman by the name of John Slaughter, John Slaughter was one of the famous sheriffs in this town, very well known. This was his slave. He lived to be over 100 years old. His name, John Sw Swain Slaughter and uh, very well respected in town also and he requested to be buried out here it's hard to read it but that's johnny blair and this kind of tells you all of the white man's diseases and everything that came into town with with the booming of a new a new town and boom town uh, he died of smallpox when he died they roped him by the boots got him out here never touched him put him in the grave and buried him and that's you know a very interesting way to put things but uh, we had smallpox we had leprosy we had everything here diphtheria and uh, might have had a lot to do with the indians getting a little impatient with the white man but uh, you come out here you'll see everything some died of natural causes but not very many these are the brady brothers uh one of the most visited graves of them all because the history is on them that they are active uh, the older brother is very protect protective of the younger brother, and you see that in the ghost hunting situations. Um, I had a get ghost, a cheap one, out on my phone, and I had it in the gift shop one day, and it came up, uh, rage, bed, flow, bottom. Those were the words that came up. And I looked at it, and I didn't know what it meant. And then all of a sudden, Brady came up. And once again, the hair on the arms, because they were drowned in the San Pedro River, one saving the other. We don't know which one. Some assume it's the oldest one, but we don't know. That happened. Mm -hmm. And they, they get a ton of, of uh, readings here for it. Wow. This is Emmett Nunley. Uh, in the 40s, this place kind of went down again for a little bit, but he came in, he fixed it up. He requested to be buried here. Uh, but he did a lot of work to help get this thing open again. And uh, in fact, the little brochure you saw, mm -hmm. that was copyrighted by his wife. Uh -huh. So she is she is still remembered here too. But uh, he did a lot of work, opened up the gift shop, everything. Uh, I guess maybe that uh, a lot of people will ask, how come there's so many people died in 82? That's one of our biggest questions we get, and that question is answered with, it was a big town back then in comparison to, it was the biggest town between San Francisco and St. Louis. Uh, the other thing is the unknowns out here. Mm -hmm. There are 93 unknown or unmarked graves out here out of 256. The reason being, they'd come to town, they'd die, they'd get put on what was called a cooling board, and that cooling board sat there for three days. If nobody claimed them or knew who they were, they were buried. So that might answer a lot of questions about that. All right. Very good. Well, thank you very much for taking the time today. You're welcome. Thank you. On your way out of Boot Hill, you're going to pass through the gift shop. And be sure to take a look around in here. There's lots of tombstone souvenirs, merchandise, and memorabilia. They've also recently revamped their website at discoverboothill.com. This is a great place to see old photos, learn some history. And you can also buy many of the items that are located in the gift shop. Maybe you forgot to grab something while you were here. Or maybe you're too far away to come to Tombstone and get these things yourself. But you can order them straight from the website directly to your house. All right, everybody. Well, that'll wrap it up for our look at the Boot Hill Graveyard today. I want to give a big thanks to Wayne for taking the time to show us around. And I do hope you enjoyed coming along with us. If you did, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe on the way out. 
those things really help us out they don't cost you a thing i've also had a couple of people ask me how do you become an exclusive member and you can do that by hitting the join button at the top of the channel page you can do this on either a computer a desktop laptop or on an android device i don't think you can actually do it on an apple unfortunately and remember this is one of the locations that you can investigate at the tombstone wild west paracon go to tombstoneparacon.com for tickets before they sell out but i want to thank you all for coming along with us i definitely appreciate you all and until next time until the next video we'll see you down the road